Aloha. I'm Eric Anderson, pastor of Church of the Holy Cross, United Church of Christ in Hilo, Hawaii. And here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about the 21st chapter of Matthew's Gospel. In chapter 21, Matthew described Jesus' last visit during his earthly life to the city of Jerusalem. The chapter opens by telling of Jesus' triumphal entry, a parade that was pretty much unmistakable assertion of a messianic claim. Further on, Jesus entered the temple and he threw out the money changers and the money lenders. In this section, set on the next day, the priests wanted to know from Jesus what authority he had to do these things. Frankly, if it had been my church and somebody had done things like this, I'd have asked very much the same thing. Everybody, in fact, wanted to know what authority Jesus had to ride into the city in the same way as predicted for a Messiah. Curiously enough, Jesus refused to answer. But he went on to put this question to the priests and the religious authorities of the temple. He told a story about two sons asked by their father to go and work in the field. One said yes and did not go. The other said no, but he went. Which of these, asked Jesus, did what his father asked? The answer, of course, is clear, and the priests were able to give it. The one who did what he was asked, whether he said no or not. Jesus then said something astonishing. He said that the people who had done what was sinful in the sight of the law of the people and of God would be the ones going into the realm of God before those who were regarded as good and as righteous. The priests, the lawyers, all those accounted wise teachers, they would be following the others. Why? Because when John the Baptist came, those people heard his words, summoning them to a different way of living, and they had believed. They had acted. They had changed their lives. Not so the righteous ones. Jesus warned us over and over and over again against, against assuming that because of our righteousness, no one else can be loved by God. That because we do our best to do well and to do right, nobody else who doesn't meet our standards will ever do so. That seems to be a fundamental error of those who strive. John the Baptist knew, Jesus knew, and if we read these books, we should know that God's compassion and regard are for everyone. And if we're going to worry about who's first and who's last, well, the ones who most need God's love get it first. We who are content, well, we will receive it. But maybe just a little later than those who need it more. 
I suppose it's worth asking if, in fact, you and I are really so righteous as we think. Chances are, well, I'll speak for myself. I know perfectly well I'm not. So perhaps this is, in fact, a better word for me than I like to believe. Then, indeed, I stand in great need of God's compassion and love. And who knows? <laughs> it might just be me in that need who's first in line. That's what I'm thinking. I'm curious to hear what you're thinking, so send me an email or leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. From Church of the Holy Cross, UCC in Hilo, Hawaii, that's what I'm thinking.